Yeah, Lorenzo Alexander is here for the lowdown as he is each and every Thursday. And uh, as this season has gone on, especially for the Cardinals, it's gotten more and more uh, enjoyable to look at this team, so and to kind of watch this team and see where they have grown. Wolf, though, you put this in your uh, in your pre-show notes, and we were kind of talking about it, and we, we didn't want to give anything away to each other where we were going to go with this uh, topic before we got on the air. But it's an interesting point. Like, if you could still – if you could improve – one room on this team what would it be yeah what would it be if you could pick any the quarterback room the offensive line room defensive line room the secondary whatever it may be if you could pick one room from a positional perspective what would it be that you'd like to see somebody grow and who you think might actually be able to grow into that role right now because there are some young guys right, on right, this right. team that are really developing. Right. And, and and it probably would be the edge rusher. I mean, that's the easy pick. I mean, but I think there's three or four young linebackers, and I would throw Zayn in there as well. <laughs> right. That was mine. Because, yeah, I mean, it's just that's probably it, the biggest one. I mean, um, I think the offensive line, obviously, with the depth and the injuries, you would, you know, want to improve that and have some guys jump up. But where you're going to probably get your biggest bang for your buck because offensive line gets to work collectively together, and typically you're greater than the sum of your parts if you communicate really well together, even though individually, oh, he's a fish. But, hey, man, he got a guard in a in a center that may be chipping or the running back, right? So you can hide a little bit better in there. So I think the biggest bang for your buck is definitely going to be the continuation of these outside backers continue to grow, um, develop, uh, especially when known passing downs, being able to win these one-on-one matchups um, more consistently and at a higher rate, you know. So whatever that looks like, whether it's, it's Zavin, Jesse Lucetta, um, these guys being able to step up and start to create, uh, was it Browning they just brought in, right? Um, these guys, yeah. the second half of the season, if this Arizona Cardinals offense is going to continue to grow and be as explosive as it is, when you're facing the Jets, you know, these type of teams, when you're up a score or two and you know they have to pass the ball to get back into it, now can I go out there and start eating that wheel and really put pressure on the quarterback with the front four? I think they've done a great job. Like I said, they're starting to win a little bit more one-on-ones, watching Zavin um, and his technique getting a little bit better on the outside. I think they've also done some stuff as far as uh, scheme-wise, blitzing guys, uh, create pressure. And then also, but that puts a little strain on the back end, and I think the back end has been holding up. So we talk about those check downs, right? Yeah. The quarterback having to go through his progression. They're getting some coverage pressure, coverage sacks, because the back yep. end, oh, well, let me look. I got to go. I got to go. Bam, then somebody wins late, right? So if we can start creating those win rates without necessarily the back end having to play as well as they are, but just winning, you know, within that first, you know, two seconds is typically what it takes mm-hmm. to get to a quarterback that's throwing on time. If we can start having that go up a little bit more, then this defense, you start seeing even go to another level, right? You got the bend, but don't break. But now we can create some special times where we can maybe turn the ball over and give our offense some more opportunities as yeah, well. Yeah, it's interesting because you're talking about the covered sacks that are starting to happen. And there are some covered right. sacks that are starting to happen right now. One of the biggest plays in the game against the Jets was the strip sack. Oh, yeah. Xavier Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, now that was he, Aaron Rodgers was rolling out, out, didn't know where he, didn't at. Know yep. where he was going to go. Yep. And all of a sudden, Xavier Thomas comes over the top and hacks that out. That was a turning point mm-hmm. in that game. It was right. a game Matter Rabbit fact, brought up when we had that, him on the other day. Yeah, that was Purge. <laughs> that was suddenly where Aaron Rodgers was looking at Jeff Albrecht and you, he was hearing this <laughs> The Purge is there. Yep, and I want to say this. Warning, <laughs> warning, Will Robinson. <laughs> and it was all because of they got some production from a guy that would not stop, right. Xavier Thomas, and he's a rookie once yeah. again. You know, um, man, grow strong, grasshopper. 12 different players had a pressure on Aaron Rodgers. 16 had a pressure on Caleb Williams. Yes. 16 different players. Not 16 pressures, 16 different players. Yes. Right. I, so, I mean, <laughs> I, I think your answer is is the clear. I think we all agree that that would yeah. be the one. I, I'll throw another position group at you if you want to even just like, this would probably be my second choice. Because I think at the start of the season, we may have said secondary because the corners are so young. Secondary looks great right now. Really good. Great in the, in the safety right, room yeah. and then really good. What about receiver? Like, I would almost, when you're talking, Wolf, and I was trying to come up with an answer that wasn't edge rusher, and you're talking about, you know, who who could help them evolve, obviously Marv, but, I mean, I, I do feel like receiving that room is still kind of a work in progress right now. Just those guys growing up, 
And so we're not talking about free agency either. Are no, we just no. in this room, just right room, now, who they, they have. have. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, they got guys. I mean, they got Zay. They have MSJ. They got, obviously, you get the duality of, of Michael of Wilson. What, yeah, Michael Wilson has played really well. And yeah. when he's at, called upon, you know, they got McBride. That is a receiver option as well. Um, I think they have enough there, enough enough explosiveness there to do some things. That, and if Kyler continues to evolve, right, getting the ball out of his hands, because when they're at their best, he's looking guys off one hit and he's, and he's and he's coming out, right? So I think it just lies on him continue to be this MVP caliber of a quarterback because receiver-wise, I think they have guys that can catch the ball. Elijah Higgins is another guy, right, tight end. Yeah. He's able to catch the ball in the passing game. So they can attack you. A couple of different ways and go big pass and go small and pass. Um, would you always want another guy that can win one on ones, you know, outside of Marv? Sure, but I think they have enough right now to be elite, especially when we see them what they did against the Jets, considered one of a top tier defense or a good defense, yeah. and was able to go down the field and pass the ball doing it. I think it's cool to have this conversation now, and we all okay. We all say edge rusher, and then it's like okay, if you had to find a second one, you kind of have to stretch. Like you went through, Zoe. Like you're not. It's not. It's not the quarterback room. It's not the offensive right. line room. Probably. It's not the secondary at this point. It's probably not the linebackers at this point. So it's not the running backs. The running backs have been out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, the, although there I do want to see the the running backs continue to grow because right. I'm worried about James Conner. Yeah, he's <laughs> totally rock. I mean? Right. And I think to your point, I think. Um, Running the ball, they're really good. It's you know, it's third down, some of the protection stuff that you want to see, continue to see them pick yes. up. But I think, yes. but as far as getting their touches and running, I mean, they run that rock pretty good when they get their opportunity. There's not a lot out there because James is a monster and he right, just carrying right. the, the load. Uh, but I mean, even in that room, I mean, D. Mercado gets the ball one time. I'm about to house it on you, you yeah. know. So it's really <laughs> cool to see when those guys get yeah. their opportunities. They're, they're, even Trey, he's, he's running that rock downhill. I mean, he's coming down, he gets it, getting 10, 15 yards a pop. He's, he's you know what I mean? He's much more decisive, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. isn't it's, it? You it's, can see it. Those guys are growing up. Um, yes. And so, and that's why I asked, are we talking now or later? And, and and I guess, you know, hearing the morning show talk about where you want to see this grow, because it's really cool to have the opportunity to be in first place and have a lot of these young guys. You know, I know this team is going to have like $100 million in the offseason to spend, right? And I think... With these guys growing, if they're and I know mine is going to be very intentional, you can still you know bring in guys and still allow these guys to grow. And I always think about guys, and I'm not talking about don't go get the hundred million dollar man, right, right, but go get like the um, uh, go the get Micah, the fifty the, the, million, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the Micah Hyde, the Jordan Poyer, and I, and that, this is what I relate to because I was in Buffalo. These guys weren't weren't household names before they got to Buffalo, but then they became the best safety duo probably five or six years while they were together, right? And so you want to find, like, those those tier two guys, right? Don't And they, there's some tier one guys out there that don't bring a whole bunch of baggage, but when you get those guys, the mentality that's ain't true. always locked that's in. True. So you want that tier two guy that's, that's been true. balling, I just need a little bit more, right? And those guys typically come in with the mindset of team, they getting paid, but they're not this prima donna type. And I, yeah. so in free agency, if you're strategic, and, and you may have to overpay for a guy that you may not that, you know, but it's worth it versus bringing in that tier one guy who you definitely going to pay. And they come in with the locker room and kind of mess up the dynamic of it. Kind of like Kaiser White. That, I mean, they've done that with Kaiser White. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And they absolutely. have guys that they've done it. So I will continue that mode. So, yes, I want talent. But if he doesn't fit the culture, he's a no. That's I don't exactly care how good right. he is. Yep. He's a no because yep. he's going to mess it up. I've seen it way too many times. They, they have these T-shirts, the Cardinals team. Over me. Yep. Those are Mac Wilson shirts, I think, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.